be quite relaxed in, in what you're wearing. If you want to walk in the clubhouse wearing your jeans, why not? Open, you've got music blasting out the, the speakers as soon as you arrive to the caddy master. And then I like to be in touch with people. I'm always, uh, I speak to our president, Stephen. I said, Stephen, the office, I'm not going to be in the office much. I want to be out there. I want to be out with the, with the people. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Future of Golf podcast. Uh, we are now 20 episodes into this series where every week we talk to someone that is creating innovation and change within the game of golf. Uh, this week is absolutely no different, and we are joined from sunny Spain by Ramon from the San Roque Club, which it seems is a bit of a pioneer in implementing new ideas and new philosophies in the game of golf, um, which has obviously been translating very well out in Spain. Um, Ramon, thank you very much for joining us. How are you doing this evening, mate? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting Graham. It's an absolute pleasure, and hopefully I can... I can give my my point of view about golf and, and the San Rocky Club. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are, are jealous of that backdrop there you've got. That looks uh, that looks lovely. I'm sure a few Claras will go down very nicely this evening. I'm just set to, sitting on the members' terrace. It's 22 degrees, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Sun is going down. Can't get much better than this. <laughs> Unbelievable. And is that sort of like the typical weather at this time of year? Or are you getting a hot spell or is that just normal? I have to say it's March is normally a good one. We've had a not so good winter. We had plenty of wind and rain, but this March, I mean, the last days, it's absolutely amazing. It feels like summer. I've been wearing yeah. short trousers and my, my shirt, as you can see, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Phenomenal. I, as I said there before the podcast, Ramon, I was out in uh, Florida in January, so that's the last time I tasted the heat. So very much longing for it at this time of year when you're over in Ireland. It just... Uh, Minus four and hailstones don't quite cut it the same. You're more than welcome to come over here whenever whenever you want and, and enjoy a bit of the sun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Ramon, obviously we, I guess, got in contact maybe about a year ago um, and you, you sort of mentioned the facilities there at San Roque. Um, yep. I'm really fascinated about sort of how San Roque has been a bit of an industry leader over in Spain, just as far as, you know, the new ideas, the new philosophies, some of the tech you're implementing. Um, yep. But first of all, really interested to find a little bit more about your journey and how you actually found yourself in this position um, and in charge of the operations of San Roque. Um, so maybe going back to the start of your your golfing career, um, can you remember like your first memory of like getting into golf and what that looked like for you? I started playing golf when I was about five years old. And the first memory I have is actually playing with my great granddad and my uncle. That's the reason I started playing golf. And it was back in, I'm from La Manga, southeast of Spain. I'm sure you heard yeah, of La Manga yeah. Club and all that area. Yes. Sure. It was a nine, nine hole course, pitch and putt, called Torre Pacheco. So my first memories of playing golf there with, with family and obviously started to, to make really good friends in the golf industry. And I mean, what can't you like about golf? It's just the best sport for me. Yeah. And is that that's a great way to get into it as well as that uh, the pitch and putt element of it. Um, a guy I was talking to previously in the podcast um, is running a company called Operation 36. So that's actually encouraging younger golfers to get into the game and practice from shorter yardages starting off. Like, you know, you see it in golf courses where younger folks are going out and they're playing the full length of the golf course and it's not good for members and it's not good for them, you know. So um, that's that seems an awesome way to actually start it. Um, yeah, I, I remember then... we used to play. We used to sorry, Graham. We used to play a lot of uh, right. interclubs. So uh, junior interclubs. Yeah, yeah. We had we used to go to big courses. We only used to maximum distance we had was 125 meters, if I don't remember wrong. And we used to go to the big courses, the 18 hole courses. Later on, when I was 10, 11, 12, and just the short game we had was absolutely stunning. Not, not much myself. I wasn't. I've never been great at short game, but it was definitely better than the, the people that learn on on bigger eighteen hole golf courses. So I yeah. remember everyone saying, "Oh, Tere Pacheco guys are here. They're gonna make us suffer to win this. They're gonna make us work to win this tournament." Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure with those Spanish hands, you're not doing too bad at the short game. If it's anything like the rest of the Spaniards, you obviously not see me play golf. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll see it one day. Um, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's that's interesting. And then, so obviously, you had a bit of a passion for the game. You were playing sort of inter club competitions. Um, was there a point, Ramon, where you said, "I want golf to be a career for me and not just a hobby"? So I started playing golf, like I said, when I was about five. Then I, when I was twelve, I actually sp- played the Spanish Championship uh, up in Asturias, awesome. where I met uh, the first person. I really met in golf, famous golfer was Seve Ballesteros, because I was playing in his, close to his hometown. And after that, I actually stopped playing golf. When I was 13, I completely stopped, uh, just bought new clubs. You can imagine how my family, they were happy with me. (laughs) Just bought the new clubs and I said, I'm not playing any more golf. I uh, started doing sailing and windsurfing. Wow. Sailing, windsurfing, a bit of kite surfing, and just completely stopped playing golf. It was years after when I, I lived in Fuerteventura, next to Lanzarote, Tenerife, this area. I got back into into golf slowly. I got the passion. I got the uh, the feel for it again, and I just wanted to keep. Couldn't stop. I got obsessed with golf. I came to live to the south of Spain, to Sotogran area in Cadiz, and and that's when I when I realised, well, this area is absolutely amazing for golf. You got top mm. golf courses in the world in, in 10 minute drive I mean, from San Roque to Finca Colchicin which is Solheim Cup venue in a few months, Balderrama uh, Ryder Cup venue 97 uh, Soto Grande there, uh, there's La Reserva there's plenty of golf courses in 10 minute drive and I said this is definitely where I want to live, this is definitely what I want to try and, and create my career and become as good as I can, I can in golf management and here I am yeah. fantastic that that's i did not know about the sailing aspect that you got into that seems like a complete 180 from golf um yes, yeah. what what got what was that just like a random passion or what got you into that no so so when you i was born really close to la manga la manga has a marmino marmino is like a big salty lake um, yeah, yeah. you have to do you have to do sailing it's, <laughs> yeah. i mean everyone not everyone but i would say 50 percent of the kids do it over there because it's just the perfect environment to to do it you, you can walk out for 300 meters and it already cover up to here so sailing windsurfing kayaking fishing you call it anything to do with water sports it was a place to learn so at the same time i was learning golf i learned how to sail and windsurf and then when i was 14 i just wanted to be on the beach with my swimsuit and not <laughs> not playing golf and completely stopped <laughs> I can't blame you there, absolutely. And a, a balance between both is probably healthy there. You see a lot of yep. the PGA Tour players, actually, they they live by the river or the lake. Um, yep. Even watching that documentary that came out on Netflix, I think it was Brooks Kepka it showed in his house, and he's about like 70 meters away from a big lake. He, I think that's the problem with him. He's spending more time out there than he is uh, on the yeah. golf course now. I'd say. I have to say, he has a he has a nicer ha- house than what I had, <laughs> and probably a nicer <laughs> lake. But yeah, I mean, why not? Water sports for me is is again another big part of my life, and I try and do it as much as I can. I enjoy it. It's not as much as golf right now, uh, but I enjoy it really, really much. Yeah. Mm. So, Ramon, just before we get on to the topic of San Roque and what you guys are doing there, um, yep. you mentioned about the concentration of awesome golf courses in the region. Um, yep. Do you want to maybe touch on that and why it's such a golf hotspot where you are at the minute in Spain? Yep. So right now, first first thing is obviously the weather. The weather we have here is absolutely amazing, as you can see now. And the golf yeah. courses we have are just amazing. Like I said, Valderrama, Finca Colchicin, La Reserva, Soto Grande, now the uh, Hacienda uh, there's, there's in 10 minutes, literally 10 minute drive, you have courses that just when you walk in, you go, wow, it, it feels special. Uh, conditions of the course, uh, service you get in all the courses, uh, the amount of people just coming here to play these these five golf courses, it's absolutely stunning. And that's actually a good thing for us because uh, where we are now, there's a lot of uh, competence. So we're all trying to get better than the others. And it always keeps us yeah. keeps us uh, concentrated and, and, and on point on to, to get ready to, to get better. Yeah, I think a parallel to that is, is kind of like where I live in Ireland at the minute. So we have 
Port Rush, which was obviously a British Open venue. Then we have yep. Port Stewart beside it, uh, and yep. Castle Rock, which is kind of rivaling that at the minute. Um, so you'll you'll find that in Ireland as well. There's like concentrations of unbelievable courses in close proximity. Um, around the Dublin region as well, you have your your awesome links courses, the Port Marnox, the Valley Bunions. I could go on. Um, but I, I have a, a bit of golf experience out in Spain, not down in your region, but I played uh, Golf El Montaña. Um, that was 2019, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. And when I went into the clubhouse, I believe Johan Cruyff was a member there. So there was pictures of him in the clubhouse with Seve going out and playing. Um, and yeah, there, there's something about the, the Spanish golf experience. It's just it's hard to match. That's I always speak about creating memories. That's a memory right there. That's an experience. So the, a lot of people will say, "Oh, we, we deliver a great service," but not people, not a lot actually deliver it. So a lot of people talk about it, but don't deliver it. And that exactly there, that memory, that's what creates an experience. That's what you want, and that's what we try and create here for every single person that walks through the door. Mm. And you guys at uh, at San Rocky Ramon seem to be paving the way for that experience. Um, so, I, I mean, we've talked ourselves personally just about the ways that you're innovating. Um, do you want to give a bit of a backdrop on, like, I guess the culture of the club and, and some things that you're implementing at the minute? Um, obviously, using our friend uh, Frederick's technology at the club as well. Um, also, yeah. Do you want to just How give us strokes? a backdrop on what's going on? Yeah, so basically, uh, San Rocky Club uh, opens... 2021 June for all the public. It was open at the end of 2020 for, for members and it, after multi-millionaire renovation and we had to start from, from scratch basically. That's a good thing. New management took over. Our president Stephen Dundas he's absolutely amazing and it's not just because he's my boss. He's actually the way he thinks, he manages, he, he, he really tries and change things. Why does everything have to be a certain way? Oh, it, it's been like that for years. So there's new ways, there's younger people into golf. Uh, we need to start changing, especially now the membership is getting older, not just in the UK, also in Spain. What are we doing and what are the golf courses doing to actually get this new membership involved? And that's where I think the clue for us and, and where we are being different to all the clubs in the area is where we're a bit more welcoming, we're open, we, we, the friendliness of the staff, the, the membership, we're quite relaxed in... in what you're wearing, if you want to walk in the clubhouse wearing your jeans, why not? You can come in to, to have lunch. Uh, if you want to have, play golf with, with your dog, why not? You can you just go have a walk anyway. Uh, range, it's open. We've got music blasting out the, the speakers as soon as you arrive to the caddy master. So we have a bag drop area. You drop your clubs up. The caddy master picks, a, he picks them up for you. You walk into the shop. There's music mm-hmm. in the shop. Welcome to San Rocky. It's it that it's 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 warm. It doesn't feel cold. Sometimes in golf courses, you 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 walk in and you feel cold. And oh, should I be doing this? Am I allowed to do this? I'm allowed to do. Hey, do what you want. Just enjoy it. Have a great day. Hopefully, you go away with a with a memory and and you have a great experience. And that's what we're trying to to achieve with different things. With different mm, things. Yeah. If, if you want to go into those different things, I'm more than happy to. But <laughs> there's a few. No, don't worry. We are going to go down several rabbit holes, Ramon. Don't you worry. Um, but just from the surface level, what I think is so interesting because in golf, I think you you sort of get one of two things with clubs, right? So you'll either get a really prestigious club that's a bit stiff, you know, collars and tuxedos going into the clubhouse, um, which which certainly has its place in some capacity. And then you've got the opposite, which is, you know, a truly like casual experience where you can yep. go and just do basically whatever you want. What I find interesting is you guys are kind of combining two because you've got an awesome golf course and proper good facilities, but then you've also got that relaxed atmosphere. Um, I'm interested in how that reflects in the demographics that are actually coming to your club. Like what, what does your usual clientele kind of look like that play there? So right now, so basically San Rocky Club has uh, five, close to 550 members and members can only play, well, can only play, sorry. They can play with priority between 7.30 in the morning and 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in high season. Then after that, Greenfield players are allowed to come in. Uh, out of the membership, I would say at least 50% are British. So that's that's one wow. of the one of the of the keys of the keys of, of our 
uh, atmosphere and, and our club is our membership. So all our members are all welcoming, they're all friendly. You can have a drink with them, no problem. If if anyone walks in from from the street and, and sits down, you will just feel it. You just come in here, you feel it. You you. It's just a great club, not just because of the staff, mainly because of the staff, but membership also helps. And part of that membership is is now getting younger, thanks to all these mm. things that we're we're doing. And and Greenfield players that we get from all over the world. We now we're starting to get more Americans because obviously the Lifto and Sohe come come in this year. But yeah, all European, British, Scotland, Ireland. In Europe, I would say we get more Norwegian, Scandinavians, Scandinavians. Yeah. So, and when's the Lift Tour event due to come? Lift Tour is end of June, and Solheim come Solheim Cup is September. So Easter is in in about ten days, and I'm sure it's going to be nonstop as from there till yeah. end of October. End of October, we get uh, October. End of September, October, we get a lot of German people. So they always come over in that season, which uh, it's also nice to have them here. And yeah, but I think basically as from Easter to end of October, it's going to be nonstop. We have in we had a low season from November to to now, and low season we've been having about two hundred players a day between two golf courses. So really looking forward to the high season. Um, if there's if there's any luck, I can get you I can get you a tea time maybe. <laughs> Man, if if that's your low season, wait till you see your high season. That will be yeah. that'll be incredible it, and it really mean, happy for you th- to get the. I was gonna say it means we're doing things Go right, ahead. and people uh, people are coming back, and people want to come here and, and experience what what we're doing here, what we we're, we're changing. Yeah. Fantastic news about getting the Live Tour event and the Solheim Cup as well. Um, two area, events yeah. that will it's... ultimately shine a bit of publicity on you guys as well. Yeah, and that's that's the the good thing about this area is with these amazing golf courses, we all help each other. So these events are, are different golf courses. Uh, Live is a Balderrama, Finca is has the whole Southern Cup, but it's just great for the area. And having these top five courses here helps helps all of us, not just them, the whole the whole industry in the in the area. And that's that's amazing. Yeah, exactly. And you, you touched on sort of like the, I guess, the culture that's been created at the golf club as well, Ramon. Um, it's yep. almost like that intangible element of an experience at the club that you can't really yep. put your finger on. Um, I think it would be an interesting point now to maybe go into the spe- specifics of like how you've actually created that culture. So maybe let's yep. talk in technology first. Um, yep. So what maybe what things have you implemented in the club that is, you know, a bit groundbreaking compared to some clubs in your area? So basically, like I said, the first thing you find is as soon as you arrive, you've got music. People say, music on a golf course? Music on the drying range? You must be mad. No, it's actually, I now walk in any other golf course and it feels empty. It feels, oh, I can't hear. Well, there's something strange going on here because I'm used to all the yeah. music and the, the atmosphere creating. As soon as you walk in the shop, you've got the obviously a solution from Frederick, how many strokes, which is helping quite a lot to get rid of paper. And, and having more display space in, in, the, in, the, in the desk for the pro shop. The players actually enjoy uh, trying to figure out uh, what handicap they're playing. And then we also have loads of yeah. information on it, green speed and anything. And then as soon as you walk out the shop, you've got a big screen with all the offers we have. Um, if we have a, an important match, we'll welcome to the Sunrock Club. Let's say last week we had Hermitage Club, Centurion Club, welcome to San Sunrock Club with the names uh, then you just walk into the into the members room the restaurant again music it's 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 a it's a whole thing it's a whole whole experience all together that with with it's going away from technology the staff the way we we treat people the way we speak to them it's not as, as it's always correct but not as uh, firm serious cold that you would get in a standard golf course there's there's space for everything but Again, if we're trying to get golf to get younger members, we need to start changing things. And, and I'm sure you yourself or, or me, if I wanted to join a club as a member, I want it to be friendly, open, easy, uh, enjoyable. And this is what, what we've got here. Mm. 
yeah, it's, it's a really interesting point on the friendliness because you would think that that will be a huge selling point for clubs if they are welcoming to members. Whereas I guess like the aristocracy of golf clubs and wanting to be like an exclusive club um, in many cases, especially in American clubs. Um, you know, when I went out there, I visited multiple clubs in New York and it very much was like, um, and you can understand why, like, cause they're paying 50,000 or $60,000 per year for membership, which is just, mm -hmm. it's ludicrous, but they want this feeling of exclusivity. Whereas, you know, to grow this game, it is in the youth at the end of the day. So we need to encourage experiences that are getting these younger people and encouraging them to actually say, you know what, I'm going to go down to the club today and I'm going to try yeah. my first game because I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to have to pay a huge green fee. Um, and it seems like, you know, that is sort of what you guys are facilitating there. Um, yeah, but I, I have to add two things. So first of all, just we're, we're not exclusive. We're the opposite. We want to be inclusive. We want to be welcoming. But I think in the future, these same things we're doing here will be do, done in other different clubs privately just because members will ask for it. It will, it will eventually go. There will still be space for certain clubs that they want quiet and peace and play on your own and have your, your private back garden. But still, the, the way uh, the staff treating these members, I think it will, it's slowly changing and we'll make it. And the second thing is the, the academies. We've got the uh, Jason Floyd Golf Academy here, and the juniors that they bring on, on weekly basis and, and, and programs to go to the states. It's absolutely amazing. They're they're all future members. They're and they love it here. Why why wouldn't they? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, hard to beat. Um, one thing I, I actually would add to that is um, I would say one thing that's comparable to your experience is what I experienced out in Florida when I went to the PGA show. So I went out and played a few courses there and you know yourself, Ramon, like British versus American hospitality is just yeah. a totally different ball game. So we were playing, um, can't remember the name of the course now, but we arrived at like the, we arrived in an Uber. It was a fairly modest mode of transport and they open up the car door. Welcome Mr. Curry to your club. They've got music blaring in the clubhouse. We get a buggy, drive down to the first tee. They've got a gift bag, got whiskey for us. And I'm like, this is how it's done. This is how it's done yeah. right here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to say something on that. I obviously uh, agree. Um, but we try not to go the American way just because of the reason that sometimes it feels like a script. Sometimes it yes. doesn't matter who yeah. you're speaking to. It's exactly the same words. It's exactly the same process. We try to give it a bit more personal, a bit more unique uh, touch to it. And yes, we do the welcoming. We give you an aluminum water bottle. We try to reduce plastic. You can fill up in the fountains. But it doesn't whoever's in the shop is not always going to be the same. And I think that's the magic of it, that I'm speaking to a person that, that gets to know me, that gets uh, to... I can why why after your round why can't I have a little joke with you? Oh, Mr. Smith, what a shot you hit on eighth! What I mean, that's amazing. That mm. that that's personal. Sometimes yeah. in the states it's a great service, but sometimes it feels to me it's a bit uh, robotic, a bit uh, script. Mm. And it's it's uh, we obviously get ideas from them, but um, hopefully they'll be getting ideas from us soon. Yeah, no, I, I have felt that in a certain capacity over the States. However, the course I went out to, it was called Champions Gate, um, mm -hmm. stood out to me in particular. There was nothing scripted about their service. Like it was just very good personalized service. And it, you know, like things like that it is going back to the memories. Like I will remember how they treated me for the rest of my yep. life there. Um, I guess going back to your day-to-day -day job then at the club, uh, Ramon, do you want to maybe talk about like your own roles and responsibilities in uh, San Rocky and uh, sort of where you find your joy day to day when working there? Uh, that's that's a that's a tough question. <laughs> I where I find my joy, I actually, do? I well, I obviously uh, overlook right now the the golf operations of the club. Uh, I walk in, I make sure that um, everything's ready to to get to receive all the players. From the bag job, caddy masters, pro shop, uh, walk in the restaurant. I always walk in the locker rooms, kitchen. Uh, I just check, basically check that everything's where it should be, and everyone is where they should be. Uh, yep. I try and, and answer the emails uh, early in the morning, just before the players come out. And then I like to be in touch with people. I'm always, 
I can speak to our president, Stephen. I uh, said, Stephen, the office, I'm not going to be in the office much. I want to be out there. I want to be out with the, with the people. I want to be getting feedback. I want to be, I want to meet you. This is what I call, or we call touch points. So let's say I, I meet you in the morning, the caddy masters, and I get, I see you around. I go into the, into the bar. Oh, how's that coffee? Oh, he's playing the old course. Yeah, this and this. I'll go out. I'll see you on the course. Caddy masters see you after nine holes. They'll see you after 18. And I'll see you in the bar again. Hey, Graham, how was that? Was that good? So uh, I'm, I'm more of uh, people. I, I, I speak to people. I, I enjoy uh, helping them. I enjoy just treating with people, to be honest. That's, that's, that's what I enjoy and what I like. Make, making people feel special. That's a really nice thing to, to do. And if you feel really, or I feel really good when I, when I achieve it, to be honest. Hmm. it's such an important role and it was a thing that we emphasized at king's barns as well when i was over there last year so we always had uh, a starter and two people to greet the groups of americans coming off the bus with a handshake and welcome the king's barns um and you mentioned their touch points it's just making sure that a person is satisfied throughout their day you need you need yeah. people to do that in clubs um and especially yeah. like like high-end places like yourself or, or king's barns it's super super important yeah, we, we have different ones. I think the, the role, uh, guest experience, the guest experience role, which is quite common in the hotels, is going to slowly come into to golf golf courses to, to stay, golf clubs. We have uh, ourselves, we have we meet you at the bag drop, we meet you at the start of first tee, we meet you after nine holes, after 18, and hopefully once you finish your lunch in, in, the, in the restaurant. So it's, it's quite a lot of touch points, and to have that person in charge or the person you can actually go up to, Oh, I think I need this, or I would like this, or I'm missing this, or this is not working. Having that guest experience role is going to be really important and helps also the, the younger membership uh, in, in the future for the golf clubs. And I'm sure we'll see more and more in the next few years. Yeah, let's hope so. And what about yourself then? Do you get the opportunity to play much golf at these yep, fantastic so, golf courses nearby? Yes, so part, part of, of my job is uh, actually playing with with members and, and some guests when to actually get feedback again when when you're playing it I could drive around in buggy and you might not see the same things that you see when you're playing it when you play the mm. golf course you actually get a feel what the players feeling and and you say oh this doesn't really make sense here or we should get this better or when I'm standing on this day I'm thinking of this so when you actually play the course which is part of my my job not as much as you'd like to, but it is. <laughs> uh, you, you, you get the opportunity to, to get things better, to make this experience better for all the, all the golfers. And yes, I try and, and play other courses in the area. Luckily, we have, we're all really good, uh, good atmosphere between the, the clubs. We get on really well. And if any of the caddy masters, pro shop, uh, any of the staff want to come and play to San Rocky, they're more than welcome. And the same and the opposite. If I want to, me or any of my colleagues would like to go and play any of these top golf courses, we're always more than welcome. It's a reciprocal, reciprocal thing we do, and it's it's great. It's definitely part of uh, part of the payroll. Yeah, that's a big benefit for sure. I again jealous of the the playing element of your role there as well. Um, and as far as like future plans for San Rocky, is it is it continuing down this path of like constantly pushing the boundaries of of sort of innovation as well as making the the experience comfortable for people? Is that sort of your your plan for the future? Yeah, so not not just me, uh, all the team, and, and again our, our president. We we like change. We like uh, changing things, and I think what we've done, mulch we've done. We put uh, mulch is the wood chips we put on on the grass. Mm. Golf courses have copied it. The water bottles we give you when as a welcoming. Golf courses have copied it. Uh, the drying range we put artificial grass. A lot of golf courses have copied it. Uh, pro shop how we work. The bag drop. A lot of golf courses have copied it. Um, and that's the next step. In fact, uh, soon in April, we won't be handing out the water bottles anymore. And no one knows this, so keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, we'll be handing out. Well, you've out... just published it in the podcast. I can I can edit it out <laughs> if needs be. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, but just just to, like okay, we used to give the water bottle. Everyone's used to that. They expect that. There's no wow into that. What we're doing different. So as from April, we will have a different uh, welcome gift. Um, and that will change the game again and, and keep keep improving, keep changing, keep 
impressing people. So when they come to San Rocky, oh, if you go to San Rocky, you get the water bottle. Oh, you won't now. You'll get something, hopefully, that will impress you and, and say, oh, that's that's a nice touch. And I assure mm-hmm. you, of course, it's a copy. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems a fantastic culture you've got there and uh, I have no doubt your, your, yourself, Ramon, and the rest of your team will constantly keep pushing those boundaries. Um, and I, for one, would be excited to get out there someday and actually have the full San Roque experience. More than welcome. You know, you're more than welcome. And it's, it's just the vibe, the feeling when you, when you walk in that, that's what gets you and creates a memory, which is what we, we try Hmm. so Ramon if there's anyone that's watching the podcast that maybe wants to learn a bit more about San Rocky or just wants to check it out like is there anywhere online that they can go to to get a bit more info yeah just uh, go into the San Rocky club.com and you'll get all the information in there you can also follow us on, on Instagram LinkedIn uh, Facebook pages we, we try to be quite active on them and you'll find everything you need to know and, and follow us and, and see what a lovely club we have Awesome. Listen, enjoy your your evening uh, rolling into the sunset there, Ramon. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll speak soon. Yeah, thank you for your time, Graham. And hopefully it gets gets people to to change a bit the way they they think and they try and manage golf courses and hopefully they get a few ideas to implement in theirs. Thanks for watching another episode of the Future of Golf podcast. To make sure you don't miss another one, click subscribe. And to track my personal progress at Handicaddy, check out handicaddy.com and visit our links on our social, all down below.